doing today in this video i'm going to be checking out the ecovax this is the dbot x2 omni i did receive the sample from ecovax but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own that being said if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it the link to it will be in the video description take a look at the retail box and packaging this looks amazing i love the graphic and photo that we have on the front right here they walk you through some of the key features you can also learn more about those on the side like it's cutting edge square shape dbot with smaller station great image there all those features expanded on the back all-in-one omni station with hot water mop washing you'll see our embedded lighter navigation giving us that smaller and more compact shape and then they walk you through the dual spinning turbo auto lifting mop pads and here's a look at this side with our station that includes hot water mop washing now let's go ahead let's open it up and see what's inside here are all the contents first up we have our product literature consisting of our one year warranty information followed by our instruction guide and manual this is available in multiple languages very detailed and thorough going over everything you need to know about your vacuum how to set it up how to care and maintain it that good stuff next we have one extra floating rubber brush power cord and cable take note it does have a 90 degree connector on it side cleaning brush base plate for the omni station you'll see the omni station right here and then last but not least we have the vacuum itself let's go ahead let's look at the station in the vacuum in more detail here's a look at the top of the omni station this is a lid that just opens up to reveal both our dirty and clean water tanks clearly labeled for us show you what the tanks look like from all different sides and angles just pop this clip open to easily empty refill clean as needed same for the dirty water tank right here we'll open that one up as well and then you can see inside with both the tanks removed and they just easily slide right back in place you also notice on the station we have basically a quick start guide up at the top for you built right in love that feature and then this easily just shuts right back down. Here's a look at the side profile of our Omni station and the other side. Here's a look at the back side of the unit. You'll see some additional product stickers here with tech specs and information for you. Got a built in carry and grip handle here. Maybe an opportunity for future expansion. I'm thinking the ability to, you know, pump out the dirty water and add a water line inlet right here, direct connect. So maybe that's what's coming. I don't really know, but stay tuned. Then you'll see built in cable management here, toggle on and off switch and our power connector here's a quick peek at the bottom of the base with four grip feet and now we're looking at the very front of the unit you'll see ecovacs dbot x series branding up here and we have one control button we can do short presses to start or pause and a long press to self-clean ecovacs logo and branding down here we're going to have basically just press in to release and you'll see our self-empty vacuum bag so we can swap those out as needed and down at the very bottom, you'll get a feel for the charging contacts, drying, water cleaning mechanism, and refilling all at the very bottom of our unit. For those wondering, on our Omni station, we have a blue button here we can press, and we're able to pop out our tray for easy cleaning. You're definitely going to want to do that over the course of the lifetime of this vacuum. Really nice that this is removable and easy to wash. Now you're looking at the top of the X2. Take a look at our control options right there, as well as Ecovax logo and branding. Navigational bumper on the front. You may have noticed too, rounded backside, square front side, so a really unique design. You'll see magnetic removable cover, really high quality and nice. Revealing an on and off switch, Wi-Fi indicator light, vacuum information here, and we have a removable dustbin if we ever need to empty this out manually or clean it or replace filters we can do that right here they have instructions for you take a look at the inside with our bin removed magnetic cover just snaps right back on and in place now you'll see the vacuum from the front again with that navigational bumper how it's able to process the environment with our cameras and array right at the front some additional sensors on the side right there for our vision and navigation you'll see that side profile and the play that the bumper has here's a look at the back side this is where your dust is going to come out for the self empty so we can pop that open see some charging contacts water inlet option here for refilling the unit here's a look at the side got some ventilation additional sensors there's the play again in the navigational bumper 
Let's flip it over to the very bottom. You'll see here we have our side cleaning brush where we need to go ahead and just gently press it in place. Omnidirectional wheel, cliff sensors. So you'll see those right there on the sides and the front. Here's our already installed brush, our nice rubber brush there. Easy to remove and clean or replace as needed. Spring-loaded drive wheels, DBOT X2 Omni information, and you'll see our scrubbing mop pads down at the bottom right there. Looking at the vacuum from the backside again, I wanted to show you those mop pads in action in regards to how they're able to lift up and out of the way. So right now they're spring-loaded down, and then we can just twist them back in. So there it is lifted up, but then it will apply pressure, as you see right there, down and forcing that down as it's spinning and scrubbing, but it's able to lift itself up and out of the way. So that's how you're able to see the vacuum. With them lifted up, it's able to move freely, and then we can spin them down. It will do that automatically, obviously under its own power, apply downward pressure as it's scrubbing. Now let's go ahead, let's charge this up and try it out. So we got our first clean out of the way. We did the self empty. So maybe you can peek down in there, but you will notice that we have a lot of hair and contents already sucked up and emptied into the Omni station. But don't worry, I have multiple levels of my house. So we'll also be able to see the contents in the dust bin too. So you can get a better feel for real world cleaning. Look at that too. You'll notice on this side, we got a leaf sticking out there from the self empty but this thing is jam packed full of pet hair. Look at that, our bin is full. So let's go ahead, let's dump this out right here. So you'll be able to see everything that it's able to vacuum up before it's in the self empty. So pretty dirty in there already, a lot of really fine dirt and dust, which is great. You want that trapped in here. 
and then emptied into your vacuum bag versus spread right back through your house. But take a look. Oh my goodness, that can really pack it in there. Disgusting. So obviously we got larger particles, crumbs, food, things like that. Really fine dirt and dust then trapped in all of this pet and human hair. Disgusting. But there you go, guys. Four humans and a dog, that's what you can expect. And then I thought we'd take a look at the underside of the vacuum, get a feel for the brush roller and our mop pads. Now keep in mind, this will go back and clean and dry the mop pads periodically. So they look as good as new. So that's what we're seeing right here with the mop pads. No discoloration, no stains, dirt, or anything like that. So it does a nice job keeping those cleans. As for the brush roller here, I'm not seeing any tangles on the main brush itself, but it sure does look like on the sides right there. Wow. Look at all the tangles that we already have here. So that's just after our first clean on our first story and second story. We have a lot of hair tangled in there already. So the good news is with this design, usually you would find a buildup like this on the main brush roller. We're not seeing that here, but with this design, it's now funneling and trapping all that hair on the side. Pretty easy to remove, but just keep that in mind that I was hoping we wouldn't even have these sorts of tangles at all anymore. So you will have to periodically maintain and still clean your brush roller, but just at the sides. Everything else looks good though. Just a little bit of dust as you would expect on the rest of the vacuum from the sides. Got a couple of scrapes and bumps right there. See the back side, And then we'll look at the other side. Here's that dust outlet too. So if we can pop that open no obstructions, pretty clear in there. So just your typical wear and tear that you would expect as it's cleaning and agitating all that dirt around your house. Make sure every once in a while too, you periodically wipe down your sensors. With our first clean out of the way, now I wanted to show you some of the key features and highlights within the Ecovacs home app. This is what it'll look like when you set up your Dbot X2. We have a couple quick settings here that you have access to. In this case, we're gonna choose start to control your robot. We'll enter into our map and all of our custom cleaning settings. So in the top right hand corner, there's a little map icon. You can select that and be sure to turn on multi floor mapping if you want to put this in different floors around your house. And then we can edit our maps right here so we can select map editing. And down at the bottom, you can add virtual boundaries so you can set up little uh, walls if you want or large areas that are rectangular that you can customize. So you can set up those no-go zones and areas. You can relabel your rooms. You can divide your rooms, you can combine them, and you have carpet adjustment settings depending on the different floor types in your house. So very easy to edit your map there. You'll see our map right here with our previous clean in room one. And then further down, you'll notice general or customized cleaning settings here. So in the general settings, we'll look at that. We can do a whole house clean by hitting the start button in blue. We could add a particular area instead. So now on the map, you'll see what's populated here. We could just do multiple areas if we wanted to clean that way, or we could select certain rooms to clean. So you can do basically area, room, multi-room, or whole house cleaning. Just pick and choose what you want. There's AI close. You could toggle that on or off if you want some AI help with your environment. Then you'll see we have our cleaning preferences, vacuum only, mopping, vacuum and mopping, or mop after vacuum. Then our different power settings right here for our vacuum, as well as our different water levels. How many times you want it to clean? Do you want to turn on deep scrubbing? You can set schedules. We can view our smart cleaning settings here. If you want to just do a quick clean, I'd make sure to toggle on the auto boost suction when it identifies carpets, get you that nice deep clean. And you'll want to turn on the object avoidance at the bottom. Then we have our station settings. So you can adjust key things here, like for self empty frequency, mop pad cleaning intervals, mop pad washing method, don't wash them, hot air drying time. You get the idea. Lot of customization options. And then we have our cleaning log. So we can see a nice detail breakout chart and graph here of our cleaning. And then we have our highlights of our clean. So let's look at our first clean right here. We can select that. Take a look at the map, very detailed, showing you everywhere it was able to clean. Square footage, how long it ran for. So we have that nice breakdown. Here's the second level. 
So nice to have that as a reference. So at the bottom here, we can select more settings or we can go back up and hit the settings gear icon in the top right hand corner. You'll see the cleaning log again. We can view our accessories and parts. They give us nice maintenance tips and tricks right here to see when it's time to replace. You also have your voice assistant settings here if you wanna to toggle that on or off. And then further down towards the bottom, you'll see a section called lab features. We can go into this and we have two options if we wanna to toggle them on. Strategic particulate removal, we can enable that if we want, or pet in the house. Up to you, pick and choose if you want either of those settings enabled from the lab. And then lastly, you can delete the vacuum. Now let's talk about and look at the video manager. So to get in the video manager, again, just right on your homepage, looking at your Dbot X2, you can select enter video manager. And you'll see, we'll have to enter our password that you set up. Once the password is entered, you'll be in to a live view of your vacuum and then we can drive it around, which is super exciting. So we have our camera, arrival on command settings, patrol settings, voice call and return to station. Look at up at the top, we have a couple image adjustments right here. So if you want a video recording status reminder, you can have a voice reminder or light reminder. And you'll see we have HDR settings right there too, which is pretty cool. We also have this map. So we can see this map and we can edit different points to go around when we go to our patrol settings. So let's start with patrol and we'll let this go ahead and follow and check on our house for us. I love this, so sweet. So say maybe you're upstairs or you know in another room sleeping, you hear bang downstairs and your vacuum's on the same floor. Well, now you can just get out your phone, dispatch your vacuum and it can do a home patrol for you. So in progress, it'll go to those set points you have and then do a 360 view. So now it's driving into the next room. Or maybe that's gonna be the original spot for it. Hey, there's our other Yeedy cube. So it's patrolling right now. I'm not driving it, it's doing its own thing. Pretty responsive, I'm impressed. So there we go, you see how it's documenting each area in that 360 rotation. Maybe we wanna get the camera out, take a photo right there. We could take a video, we could start recording a video if we wanted. As it's driving. It's doing a good job too. Pretty harsh lighting environment with all that daylight coming in. Couple overhead lights. I mean, look at the window light there. Camera's much better quality than I thought it would be. There's the video, so we can save that too or discard it. And it's still processing the environment. So cool, really neat. Call into the vacuum, maybe your pet's on the couch or on the counter or on the table. Call in, tell it to get off. Maybe your kids are misbehaving. Whatever it may be. All done via Wi-Fi. Oh, look at that, we're gonna go up to the our original, our X1. Our X1 Omni right there, baby. Patrols for you, then makes its way right back home. There we go, just finished, it's gonna return to the station. just that simple. And if this wasn't clear enough earlier, if you don't want to do patrol with the preset points, just select arrival on command. And then you'll see we can add anywhere on the map that we want to go. So say maybe there's just one particular spot. Hey, I want to go over here. That's where my dog's bed is. I want to check on my pet. Maybe while you're at work, again, out of the house, then just select go. 
in the vacuum will be dispatched to that location. All right, we've reached the designated location. And now if we want, we can rotate the vacuum. Take a look around. See what we need to see. And that's super responsive. There's no lag. I thought there'd be a little bit of lag. That might just depend on your Wi-Fi. That's doing a really nice job though. And this thing moves quickly, cover a lot of ground. And then just send it back home when you're done. How does the X2 stack up against the competition? We'll be comparing it not only within Ecovac's own lineup, but we'll also be comparing this with the over 40 plus robot vacuum cleaners that we've personally tested and reviewed. So first up, the key metric we're looking at is max suction power. This along with CFM help us to have a better understanding of how good of a job it's actually going to do cleaning for us. So the higher the score here, the better. That's what you're going to want to see. This has one of the highest PA ratings we've ever seen. Now we're taking the brand's word for it here. We have no way of measuring that ourselves, but really impressive. Eight 1000 PA suction, 3000 PA more than the Ecovax average, and 4000 PA more than the overall typical average RoboVac. Next, in regards to CFM, we got a score of 12.1. The higher, the better for this score. Typically, again, helps to get you better real world results for deep cleaning carpets, all that good stuff. So 12.1 is our score. Overall average for Ecovax is 9.7. And we almost double just the average CFM score of 7.1 for your typical RoboVac. So do those metrics actually translate to the real world with our deep cleaning score? So for this test, we embed coffee grounds into carpet and we vacuum them up with the RoboVac and we measure the results before and after. So we got a score of 85. The best possible score is 100. Compared to the brand average from Ecovacs were five points less. They typically average right around 90. Our overall generic vacuum average across, you know, all different models and brands is 85. So we're right at the average, but there is a little asterisk here because in this test, you'll see hopefully on the screen, there'll be a picture showing you what we were able to find when we removed our dustbin, there were tons of coffee grounds still on the brush roller and right at the ledge of the vacuum that didn't make their way into the dustbin. So if those were able to be counted, we probably would have had a 95 or maybe even a perfect score. So in this case, average cleaning results with a little asterisk, letting us know that it's gonna be skewed a little bit higher than what our data is showing. Next, let's talk about decibels. For this value, the higher it is, the louder your vacuum will be. We test this on a room vacuuming car with all of our max suction settings enabled. So in this case, we got a decibel readout of 79.6 decibels. The brand average is 73. So we're about a good six decibels over Ecovac's typical average. But I'd argue with that 8,000 PA suction power, we're having an even more high performing vacuum. So this is to be expected. We're about 10 decibels over the typical average for a RoboVac. So at this stage, yes, you will notice a difference between your average RoboVac cleaning on carpets versus this one when they're both at their max setting. Is it unbearable or anything like that? I would say not any more so or any more of an annoyance than any other RoboVac, you know, cleaning in the room while you're present. Next, we have battery life. This is measured in minutes. The X2 has a 212 minute battery battery life. The brand average is 225. So we're really close to the typical Ecovax experience. And compared to the competition, we're still substantially greater in regards to battery life by over 60 minutes. So 62 minutes of extra runtime with the vacuum like this versus your typical RoboVac out on the market. A lot of that has to do with our battery capacity. This has a very large capacity. This is measured in milliamp hours. We have a 6,400 milliamp hour battery in this vacuum. Typically, you'll see on these high performing flagship models, a larger battery capacity to help with that increased suction power, as well as the mopping features that we get with this one with the dual scrubbing brushes that move up and down, all of that. So that's why you're seeing that larger capacity there. 1,400 milliamps more than the typical Ecovacs battery 
and nearly double the capacity of your typical RoboVac. Next, let's talk about height. This is measured in inches. The X2 comes in at 3.7 inches tall, a little bit smaller than your typical EcoVac's RoboVac because this doesn't have your LiDAR navigation up there. So we have a little bit of height savings that might make the difference for you depending on if it needs to get under a piece of furniture around your house maybe that helps you and is of added benefit. Compared to the overall average, we're right at 3.6, so just 0.1 inches taller. And that average does include a mix of vacuums with and without LiDAR navigation modules. So again, if you have that module with a spinning laser up top, your vacuum is going to be taller than vacuums that don't have that. Next, let's talk about bin capacity. This is measured in milliliters. So the dust bin on this vacuum is 420 milliliters. That's higher than Ecovac's average of 385. We're right at the overall vacuum average, which skews higher because this result includes a lot of vacuums that do and don't have self-empty. So as you increase in your features, set, typically you start to see smaller dustbins because the vacuum is self-emptying. When you have a non-self-emptying counterpart, you usually find a larger dustbin to prevent you from having to make frequent trips to go to the trash can and empty your vacuum's dustbin. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. Self-empties usually see a smaller bin size because they go ahead and empty it themselves, where if you don't have self-empty, you have the incentive to make sure your customers have the best experience by not having to make as many trips to the trash. So in this case, we get the best of both worlds. Now let's talk about water tank capacity, also measured in milliliters. We have a 180 milliliter internal water tank on this vacuum. That's below the average of 350 within Ecovac's lineup, but there's some trade-offs here. It just really depends if it's a portable water tank or if it self empties and refills and does all that stuff. So in this case, usually when you find a vacuum that also refills its water tanks, they tend to be a little bit smaller. Not a big deal because again, they just go right back home and refill as needed. Compared to the overall average, we're below that as well. The overall average is 260, but again, that's a mix of vacuums like this, as well as vacuums that don't refill themselves. And again, just like the self-empty, when you don't have the self-refilling, you want to have a larger tank to prevent all those frequent trips to refilling your water at your sink. Next, let's talk about a new premium feature. This is your mop lift height. So with certain models like the X2, they're able to lift their mop pads up and out of the way when they're encountering carpets and rugs. So this is measured in millimeters. The higher the number, the better here. And we got the best score I've ever seen for the X2 coming in at 15 millimeters. Ecovac's average is only 8.5, so almost doubling the average from Ecovac's lineup. And compared to all units tested, same thing, coming in at 8.8 .8 millimeters, we've almost doubled the lift height here. Now, something I wanna point out, Dreamy is a competitor to Ecovacs. They have the L20 Ultra, which we've reviewed. That model can lift the mop pads, but it can also remove the mop pads on its own, go out and clean and come back. So it kind of makes the mop lift height, which is a really cool new feature, obsolete because it can just add and detach its mop pads whenever it wants. And you won't see iRobot specs on here because their vacuums like the one behind me here, if you can see that flapping up and over the X2, they completely lift the mop pad up and out of the way so it's never gonna make contact with your carpet. So take it for a little bit of a grain of salt. Great to see that's what you want, but I think the future is going to what Dreamy's doing where it can just leave the mop pads behind when you so choose or when it chooses come back and put the mop pads on when it's ready to mop. And last but not least, let's talk about the cost of this vacuum. This is going to be the top of the line premium flagship model from Ecovacs. So as expected, it's going to cost a pretty penny. This is gonna be a couple hundred dollars more than their brand average as you would expect, because again, this is their top of the line model. And you'll see it's about double the price of your typical RoboVac. Again, 
as expected, but the value has to be deciphered by you. Will it give you enough advantages from cleaning to mopping to navigating to make it worthwhile? So where does that leave us with our Ecovacs DBot X2 Omni? Well, let me share with you my final thoughts. This is coming from my experience as an X1 Omni owner as well. So first thing I wanna say is the biggest difference is gonna be in the design and how they look. We now have squared edges on the front. We don't have that rounded, complete circular design anymore. And we we no longer have LiDAR navigation up at the top. Also compared to the previous Omni station, the station for this vacuum is gonna be a little bit more condensed and shrunken down. So if space around your house is a premium, you'll appreciate having a slightly smaller, not that much smaller, but slightly smaller, and I would say improved for the better, Omni station. What else do I like about this vacuum? Well, really the key here is gonna be mopping. So if you want that top of the line premium mopping experience, look no further. 15 millimeter mop lift. We have the ability to clean and wash our mop pads with hot warm water, 131 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a key metric for you germophobes out there. So really nice washing and hot air drying. So really the top of the line mopping experience that you would want. It refills and all that good stuff too. So that's going to be key here with this vacuum. Now, speaking of mopping, this leads us to the things that I want to see improved in the future. So compared to the X1, huge upgrade here. Again, it can lift the mop pads up and out of the way, clean carpets and hard floors at the same time. Couldn't really do that without physically removing the mop pads from the X1. So great updates there. But Dreamy has since come out with the L20 Ultra, which is smart enough to detach and reattach the mop pads all by itself, so eliminating the need to even raise or lower the mop pads. So that's something I'd like to see maybe incorporated in future X3s, things like that. That seems to be where they're headed. Also, on those notes, this vacuum, I think it's key like Achilles heel, is actually its new navigation system. So typically, and I'll say the same thing for Ecovacs here, they seem to be a little bit behind in object recognition compared to Dreamy or iRobot or Roborock, just a little bit. And that holds true with this. I was expecting that going in to our review. But I got to say, with whatever this new AI powered navigation is with their dual laser design, instead of using the LiDAR laser up at the top, this just feels like it's off with how it navigates. So the best way to explain it is typically your vacuum is going to be very confident. Go row by row, super logical, all of that. This one does that to a degree, but it also seems to be more confused, maybe not confused, but just less confident. So instead of like those perfect straight lines, I just feel like as I'm watching it clean, sometimes it kind of veers off a little bit. It's like too sensitive. I don't know. So I'm not sure what's processing it, what it's finding, sensing, detecting, but it seems to be a little bit off with the navigation. So I'm hoping maybe in the future, they'll have some updates to fix that. There might not be anything wrong, but again, it just seems a little bit off from my experience using so many vacuums. So it seems like a step back navigationally from the X1, but it's a step forward functionally with all the other feature sets from the X1.